So I thought I'd make uh, my last, uh, probably my last, I might make one at the airport, but uh, for my last uh, video uh, blog before I write up my last uh, week over here in Walla Walla, um, because I thought I'd head down to literally Main Street, Walla Walla, because it kind of symbolises what I've learned. Because I, I'm, I put in my blog the meetings that I've had are really interesting. I've been to schools again. I've been to uh, the Chamber of Commerce, or the equivalent of the Chamber of Commerce. I've met with the mayor, I've met with the city manager, I've met with the commissioners, right, with all kinds of people from great organisations, social services, youth justice, um, you know, everybody really, across the, the whole piece. And uh, I think I could tell you loads of individual things I learned from each of those people. There's some really profound stuff and there's some really practical stuff. And uh, honestly, this, this three weeks here, combined with the three weeks before that when I was in the rest of America has been genuinely kind of life-changing for me personally but I think sort of view informing and changing for me as well because I've kind of learned stuff I did think I've learned and I've learned stuff I wasn't sure I'd learn and I've found out that we've got lots of real potential particularly in low stuff to, to make real big change and uh, we've got the systems and the structures and we've got the people I think who can help to make that happen um, but what I've learned more than anything and, and you can just see probably just in that corner there that is a banner and all the way up uh, Main Street here uh, this week and uh, for the whole month are banners and they're proclaiming uh, this uh, October and every October as Resilience Month in Walla Walla. What that means is the whole city gets uh, to play a part in resilience and that's why I think the more I've been here the more I, I mean I'm passionate about you know thinking about this trauma-informed approach but I think we need to think of it more as a resilience driven approach. Two reasons, one is that resilience is something everyone can use and everyone needs more of um, and it avoids people thinking of trauma as a negative and trauma is something they might not have experienced and having to explain the ACEs and everything a uh, hundred times to people actually if you talk to people about resilience then that's what we want people to have really and so I think we need to be driven by resilience rather than informed by trauma um, because then even if you don't feel like you, you sort of have got a lived experience that, that recognises trauma then uh, you certainly will benefit from resilience so that's my first observation second is that it requires such a commitment from the top down and what's been so wonderful about coming out here is I had so many people who wanted me to do well and wanted me to bring back my learning and share it and make something of it and I'm really, really excited about that and I really believe that we've got people in low stuff who are going to help us make a big difference and hopefully more widely uh, than just low stuff. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's, that's my key focus when I return is to talk about The thing that I've learned, I wrote it in one of my blogs, I've always believed this, that, that communities um, that have got ruptures, communities that need to heal, know somewhere inside them exactly what they need to heal themselves they have they have the resources to do that they just need help to find them sometimes and so you know i know that lower stuff knows what it needs and it has what it needs to heal itself we just need to help some of us help people in lower stuff think about what that looks like and what that feels like and that's the other key thing is that we can't do this from the top down we need a commitment from the top down that says everybody's going to try and model this uh, this idea of resilience um, driven practice resilience driven approaches businesses councils yes people who work in nhs yes people who are working in charities like me but right the way across the piece community leaders you know we need um you know our councillors on board we need um, our mp on board we need all sorts of people on board saying this is what low stuff needs to look like or wave me or east suffolk that's fine by me this is what it needs to look like we need to be resilience driven and then we need to not think that we know the answers those of us that are passionate about this and are kind of getting it we need to not think that we know all the answers because the answers will come only from people, people who live and, and are surviving in low stuff. And um, so that's the key question we need to get in there. And so I'm determined to get out into the community, speak to as many people as possible and explain to them this incredible stuff I've learned about, uh, you know, the, the trauma and the ACEs and epigenetics, which is just <laughs> mind blowing if you haven't heard about it. Uh, we need to share films, we need to share um, presentations, we need to share talks, we need to get some of these cool people to come over to the UK somehow and, and, and share some space with me where people come to it. But more than anything, we need to challenge people in Lowestoft to tell us where are the ruptures? Where are those ruptures? And I think, my instinct is that these aren't just ruptures in terms of people's families. We know we've got families that have got, you know, trauma and, and have got difficulties in them. But these ruptures go deeper than that, they go to culture and community. Yeah, and, and it's great, you know, and I think it's awesome. I, you know, I'm passionate about what Lowestoft Rising are doing, I like what Lowestoft Vision are doing, I like what community team and Wayne Vision Council are doing. There's no, no criticism attached to this when I say what they're doing is awesome, we need to keep doing it, but we also need to make sure that we have stuff that comes from the ground up, lots and lots of stuff from the ground up, and that's where the challenge needs to come. Like, what can you do to make your community more resilient? Where do you think the rupture is? 
Do you think it's just about families? Do you think it's about people understanding the history of the town and being proud of it? I feel like we haven't got community pride sometimes. I know that's one of the things that Earth Rising wants to deliver. But that only comes from people at the very bottom uh, of, of whatever system you think of, um, people at the ground, people who live in a real life, um, buy into that. And they can only buy into it if they see everybody up and down the line saying that they're committed to it. Because it can't be that things are too good for us. So a few years ago when I first decided to share some of my lived experience with, with mental health and, and everything like that, the main driver for that was that I was such a hypocrite because I was saying, well, it's okay for you to share your story. It's really great if you can share your lived experience. I'm not going to share mine. You know, that's a real judgment on somebody, I think. So we've got to stop making that judgment. We've got to be prepared to push boundaries a little bit. You know, and I know that's really challenging for people in, in certain sectors. It's really difficult with professional boundaries, and that, that's not something that I think you know we need to get into too much. But I do think we need to think about what we're willing to share about our lives and our communities, how we share them, bringing people together, and having people seeing each other. So I think we can do something really profound and special in low stuff. I'm pretty sure that these people here have liked me enough to think that we can make formal, long-term links. I'd love to think I could convince uh, the two mayors to, to make some kind of twinning possible. Certainly I've got schools here that would love to do joint projects with schools in low stuff, so if you're involved in a school, connect with me about that. But yeah, the main thing I've, I've learned, the main thing I'm going to take back, and I'm literally going to start on Thursday night, I land on Thursday morning, and Thursday night I'm going to go and do my first discussion with some people about this, and then on Friday I'm doing another one, and then I'm going to try and get into the community and just, just visit community centres and people and get people together and talk to them about what I've learned, but more importantly about what that means that they could do for low stuff and for themselves and for their community and for their family and for their street and I'll leave you with one I'll leave you with one uh, piece of information that I found really interesting two pieces one is this if a young person um, suffers from aces from trauma and uh, lacks resilience if, if they have four friends if it's five young people if one of those young people makes a strong and lasting trusting connection to an adult, whether that's a teacher, whether that's a community person, whether that's a neighbour, that protects all five, that adds protection to all five of those young people, all five of those, just one connection. And the other thing is this, if you live on a street, and I've said this before I think, but if you live on a street where an adult is prepared to intervene when a young person does something wrong, so if your neighbour sees your child doing something dangerous or wrong and they're prepared to say, you shouldn't do that, suddenly, overnight, if, you're, if you live on a street like that, um, then you immediately live somewhere where you're going to live longer, you're going to live healthier, you're going to be more successful, you're going to be better at school, and you're going to be better at life. That's just one of those pieces of information. And so uh, I think that's fascinating. And on fri uh, Friday last week I was at a conference, and I'm going to write that up, where I learned about uh, hope and how important hope is. The biggest determinant in the success of someone going to university is by any factor compared to where education achievement before they get to the university, their biggest factor in whether they will succeed and get a good degree at university is whether they possess hope. So that's what we need to bring back to low stuff. And I find that like I've come full circle because I remember writing when I first did my first day here in America, which seems like six years ago, it's actually six weeks, uh, in Boston, and I talked about the clubhouse project there, and their trading currency was hope. And so here I am on my last day in Walla Walla, and I went to a conference on Friday where I had a professor talk about the science of hope. And that's, I think, what we need to bring to low stuff, is we need more people to feel more hopeful and be more helpful to each other, because hope is a massive driver of success for communities and for individuals. So probably the last time I speak to you before I get back, and then you'll get sick of hearing from me when I get back, because I'm just going to go on and on about all this stuff until we actually um, make profound change in low stuff. Because, not because I want it, not because it does anything for me, um, because I'm quite a hopeful person, and my life's not too bad, uh, but because um, I think Lois not deserves it. So, uh, yeah, I'll be back soon and uh, thank you. And uh, for everyone back home who's been offering me support and love, uh, it's really weird. I'm ready to come home. It feels like a, a long time. It's been the most life changing, amazing thing I could ever have done. But uh, I'm feeling a little homesick now, so I'll be glad to be home and uh, seeing all those people who've been very kind and supportive whilst I've been away.